Hi, thanks so much for joining me once again today. This is the Infertility Channel, and we're going to be talking once again about IVF. Today, we're talking about success and failure factors of IVF. What things might you do or what things might you be that are going to increase your success? A quick story to get started. A couple of years ago, we had a patient who came from another infertility clinic, so this was her second IVF cycle, and we asked her to take medications at a very precise time and dosage. However, she thought she knew better than the physicians in our clinic, and so she took the medications a day late and ovulated early. So it's really important to find a good physician team in whom you trust, so you don't have to be cavalier about taking your medications. A couple of words about that. You might want to access the website cdc.gov to look at your clinic success rates, clinic specific reports. Another place to look is the SART, stands for SART, Society for Assisted Reproductive Technologies.org. And you can get some pretty good background information on your doctor's success rates. Try to find out how many IVF cycles they do in a year and what their trends have been over the last number of years. Find out who their embryologist is. That's all important. Find out how long he or she has been with the clinic as the embryologist. Talk to other patients who have been at that particular clinic and then make your best judgment. So if we look at the recent reporting years, we divide success rates based upon maternal age. So if the patient age is less than 35 years, we would anticipate around a 42 or 43% take home baby rate, live born birth rate. For the patient who's 35 to 37, that goes down to about 32 to 34%. For the patient 38 to 40, that's around 21, 22%. And for the patient who's 41 and 42, it's about 12 to 13%. So patients who are older than that might be looking at donor eggs or a lower percent success rate. So speaking of donor eggs, the success rate using fresh donor eggs is going to be around 55 to 60%, depending upon clinics, of course. And the average rate for using thawed eggs has been traditionally over the last few years around 35 to 40 percent but recent advances in egg freezing have brought that up in fact some egg banks are now quoting stats of around 60 to 65 percent ongoing pregnancy rate per cycle let's talk a little bit about success and failure i'm often asked about the role of stress a nice study performed in sweden and published in human reproduction a couple of years ago showed that stress levels both Physical and emotional stress in the month prior to IVF do not seem to impair IVF success. IVF failure, however, can lead to an increased chance for depression. And the cost for IVF can be financially taxing as well. That can lead to melancholy or depression for sure. Those women who have the highest levels of eggs left, and that's judged by a day two or three follicle stimulating hormone level, or an anti-mullerian hormone level, and we've talked about that in the past, those are general indices of your ovarian age. So the younger the ovaries, the higher the IVF success rates. Also, if you've been pregnant before, that increases your chances in IVF, whether that was a live-born baby or a miscarriage or a termination. In addition, if you have a body weight, we've talked about body mass indices, BMI, and you can look that up online. If your body mass index is between 19 and 25, you have the best chance. If you're lower than that, that's a problem. If you're higher than that, that's also a bit of a problem. So try to get your, your weight down. What things adversely affect success? Well, we know that if you're a smoker, that decreases your chances by about 30 to 35 percent. So stop smoking and try to be without smoke for three months going into IVF. Also, if you have a fallopian tube that's fluid filled from past infection, a so-called hydrosalpinx, we know that that can decrease your chances by about 50%. So try to avoid smoke, try to avoid excessive alcohol, try to avoid caffeine, try to exercise as we've talked about in the last episode or so. Get as healthy as you can before IVF and you're going to up your chances. A little bit more about the timing of these medications. As I told you, my wife and I went through IVF some years ago and we had to precisely take the ovulation triggering medicine. That's the one that causes the eggs to release at 38 hours. We had to take that at 2.15 in the morning. So we set four different alarm clocks. I slept through the first, I slept through the second, the third one got me. So I got up right at 2.15. I popped her in the abdomen with this little shot. Couldn't remember it the next morning. I woke up in absolute panic. 
And I said, I forgot to give you the shot. No, we're not going to be able to do the procedure. And she said, what are you talking about? This must be like residency when you did stuff in your sleep. You did great. We went out to Kansas. We got the eggs. We got some babies. Take your shots on time. You're much more likely to get pregnant. Thanks so much again for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Listen, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Now, if they're of a personal nature that you don't want everybody to see, write me at the address below. Please also subscribe if you haven't done so already and tell your friends to subscribe. I'll see you next week back at the Infertility Channel. Thanks so much.